piece of paper and your grid sheet. You're also going to need good quality sharp pencil, good quality HB pencil and or pen, totally optional. Uh, and this little thing here, a small Lego brick. That's what we're looking to be drawing. And so first thing we're going to do, as always, any of our drawings, we're going to be putting in the information for our title block. So I hope you're seeing by now what the standard is that's expected of everyone that is drawing. Drawing from the shoulder, good quality, light lines is what's being needed. So I've got my third angle projection symbol in there. I'm adding the rest of the detail. I'd have to put in the sizes. Scale, it's going to be two to one. The date. So the name of the, the drawer, this is just CDT. What is being drawn? And this is just Lego that's needed for that. And now we can start to get our sheet, just take the sheet, fold it in half, start with your basic preliminary line along the bottom, is start to mark out my object, so like we did before, getting that two times the scale, so I've got the basic preliminary lines for where this object goes, like the height as well, so this is just twice the size, so I've got that one, and I've got that one, and then I've got the little patches at the top, and I can now add in all that relevant information, so I've got information, and elevation, and the plan, and a sectional view, Remember to leave good quality gaps between each of your views. I'm just going to add in the plan view up here. <clears throat> Again, estimating with the object what the size is going to be. Starting to use what's called a bounce line. It's a 45 degree line that you project from the corner of your object. And use that to draw in uh, end elevations really quickly, uh, neatly and clearly. So I've got my end elevation drawn in there. 45 degree bounce line from here. End elevation drawn into that one and to this one and this one here. And you notice I've now got all my views uh, laid out. This one is going to be my elevation, the plan, nice, neat and clear, sectioned end elevation. And so I've now done those bits of technical detail. I've got uh, eight little, eight little uh, components just at the top of these, like so. That's me got it reasonably there, so I can now draw in light, so I can now come around the outline of the object and draw in that a little bit heavier, a little bit firmer as I come around. That one drawn in, lovely. And this one, oh, light line going across. Again, trying to get the same proportions with the. So, again, trying to work with this good quality third year of preliminary drawing, getting things reasonably uh, well proportioned. Well, take my time with it. I'm just trying to get these good quality projection lines going up through my drawing. These ones, and what I'm going to do is project these lightly across the top here. So effectively, I'm making a big grid. And by using that little grid method, I can get reasonably good quality sketched proportion, getting that nice quality there. And there I have ready and marked out for that little bit of um, basic outline. Let's take the pen and just begin to uh, actually outline. What we're looking at just now is what's called a step section view. So instead of cutting through the object once, we cut through the object twice, so cut down and then across. So what I'm going to do is going to add in my step section line. So remember it would be a long and short short and a long and then short short and then long and short short and then long. Is my small boxes, little uh, arrows indicating the direction of view. A, and so what you really need to think about now is it doesn't go straight, it goes down, along, and down again. And you really need to look at your object to work out what that's actually going to look like as it's been cut through. So if I'm looking at this from the end, uh, what I'm actually seeing, and what I'm going to see, is the sections of the little uh, borders around the outside just here, uh, down to this point. So I've got, uh, effectively, these little uh, edges, like so. So these are the edges of the object. So we've got this first section just up here, it comes across, and then up, and then across, and up, and round, and down. So you're just trying to look to see what the object actually looks like as it's been cut through. Like so. And then we've got the fact that the line comes and cuts across. It's going through all this solid material. You're not actually going to see uh, very much of that. You're just going to see this. That's how it looks. But then it comes to this section at the back. Like so. And we can actually see that internal detail. It's not overly clear because I've got it uh, quite quick. But that would be my step section. You're cut through the middle of the object. So seeing the two edges. I've cut through uh, across and then down. And this is what I'm effectively seeing. Okay. 
circle, this little section here. Just add in my uh, little detail view in and round. Add in a simple letter. And then what I'm doing off to the side is what the detail view would actually look like. I'm going to try to draw it four times the size uh, that it would be. And the thing about a detail view, it effectively gives a zoomed in view of your object. If there's parts of it that are quite challenging, quite difficult to see, people can't really understand what it maybe looks like. And so your detail view gives you all that relevant uh, information. You add in that title, this is detail view, and whatever letter it was given, this is detail view B. And then the scale that it is, because it doesn't match the scale for this rest set of the drawing, but it is a new scale that's been put in. So we just write in, this is proportionately scaled at four to one. It's four times the size of the life size object. If I was going to add in to uh, this object, the hidden detail, I'd have the internal edges, these small broken lines. They've all got a wall thickness, so they need to have this little broken line around the inside. These are the little three cylinders on the inside. There's these parts on the inside. It's got a shell. It's got a thickness to it. Blocks themselves. Got a little bit of hidden detail around the inside of these. Completed in detail. I've added in a hidden detail, I've added in a detail view, I've added in a step section view, which is lots of technical information. Space. So, have I got space enough here to be drawing? Yes. I'm going to start with my isometric crate. I'm doing this two times the size, okay? So I'm going to project up these really nice light lines. And I want to make sure that there's a space between bonnets. You need to see uh, how many there are, and then also importantly, how they fit together. And you see, I've now got both my components drawn in place. I'd be showing how they interact with each other. And then I can be starting to add on where all these little uh, slots go. Like... And then projecting up lines for each of the heights of these cylinders. And now that the shape's in place, I can begin to outline this. A wee bit, wee touch rust there. But what I'll do is I'll tidy it up a little bit more with my uh, black pen to neaten up the edges. This black outline can be done with black pen, could be done with uh, black pencil. Although my initial preliminary sketches weren't the absolute straightest, weren't the absolute greatest, I can actually be neatening them, neatening them up, tidying it up as I use my pen to uh, outline. Okay, I, I know I've made mistakes, that's just part of sketching, but now that I've come to do my outlining, I'm actually neatening up, tidying up these mistakes that I've made, and I just, I just work with that, that's just drawing. Particularly when it's preliminary, quick freehand uh, drawing like I'm doing just here. That little bit of basic render. Okay, really doesn't take too much. Lots of straight lines helps to build in that uh, impression. And there's lots of points for cast shadow, lots of points for uh, top down looking, simple lines across the top. You get a reasonable effect on your work. Okay, let's get that on there. Keeping the lines all going a single direction. So another type of view that can be done to assist with manufacture is a step section isometric view or pictorial view. So I'm going to start by drawing my isometric crate again. And in this view, different from the one that we've already drawn in orthographic, I'm going to put the section along the middle quarter of the view. And then add on the studs at the top. And 
and with the basic shape of the object done, I can do a little bit of uh, outlining. And I see I've made a little mistake with the proportion of the studs and the length of the brick, but that's preliminary sketching, we will make mistakes, and it can be tidied up with the outlining. So just adding in the internal details, internal cylinders that join the different Lego bricks together. Then taking my black felt paint to go around the outline object, remembering to do thicker lines for the outer edges and thinner lines for any uh, internal edges. And now just adding in the 45 degree cross hatching lines for showing which surfaces have been cut through. I'm titling this view in block capitals as a step section isometric or step section pictorial view. And then adding in a basic render as before. Breakout view is going to require you to draw yet again another example of your Lego block. Just adding on the technical detail that should be there, what I'm going to do is show my little breakout as if it was coming across uh, this little section right here. So the breakout is really unconventional in line, like so. Coming around and down. So I can now add in uh, other parts of the technical detail. So the, it's right here. Absolutely. This one here. And you decide the depth of the breakout view, folks. You decide what is actually going to be shown in this. Now I really should have this coming up right here, this coming up here, and this one coming up, this one coming up, like so. And right. And effectively, you're just going to show now everything that is in and around your little uh, breakout view. So what I would have is this little component uh, just in here, the kind of centre component part. Uh, for all the joining, I have this other one coming around and down uh, in here. And effectively, what I'm showing is all the internal parts of this without having to actually section it. Because some parts are cut, whereas some parts are just sort of broken into. Hence the name of the view, a breakout view. So you're able to show internal detail without having to do uh, a sliced section. It's just another means of showing internal detail, showing internal components, making it very clear how many bits make up uh, an object. So the purpose, particularly in graphic communication, graphic design, and design manufacture, is all for the medium of manufacture. Have you got the relevant information to explain to a manufacturer? Someone building something. How does this actually fit together? How how does it all how does it all go? How many bits are there? Where are the bits? Just with my liner pen, just go around the outline of the object. Remember, thicker lines for the outline of an object, thinner lines for uh, internals. So, staggered lines should be no real convention to it. There's no uniformity to it, like a hidden detail line or like a center line or anything else. It is exactly as the name suggests. It's a broken, unconventional line that runs through this. So I'm showing what the internal details of the object would look like, and to help in any demonstration. And help in any piece of work like this, add on really basic render. You don't need to spend a huge amount of time getting it particularly accurate to get the effect of depth uh, and tone across the object. So just spend that little bit of time adding this tone and depth to these small cylinders. That lines down here gives us our impression of our uh, little breakout view. And so this right here, yet again, I just have breakout is what it would be. And the last thing we look to put on is where this actually occurs on the drawing. You'd be showing down here, breakout view line, and it's also across uh, this face as well. We'll just have a breakout view as a C, okay? Breakout view and C is what it would be. And so you're noticing I've got a huge amount of relevant technical detail. All the views are linked together. Any supplementary view that's helping to explain different parts of manufacture have been clearly shown. That would be your drawing, okay?